Hey guys, today we will be discussing the concept of trespass under Indian Penal Code. We get many queries regarding the minute differences between trespass variations under the Indian Penal Code and there are often questions in the PT paper of Judicial Services exam also on this topic and uh, this one goes out to one of our special patrons. So I hope we that this answers all of your queries. Okay, let's get into the topic. To understand the variations of trespass, we have to understand criminal trespass under section 441 of the IPC. It states that whoever enters into or upon the property in possession of another. Now this part is the actus reus, enters upon the property of another with the intent to commit an offense or to intimidate, insult or annoy any person in possession of such property. This is the intention part which is also called the mens rea. There has to be actus reus and mens rea for it to constitute an offense. So the actus reus is entering upon the property which is in possession of someone else. And the intention of entering should be to intimidate, insult or annoy. Let's just call it IIA. That is your intention. And if that is your intention, then you're committing criminal trespass, my friend. Let's see further. It states that or having lawfully entered into or upon such property unlawfully remains there with the intent thereby to intimidate, insult or annoy any such person or with the intent to commit an offense. So either the person enters with the intent to intimidate, insult or annoy or he enters rightfully and lawfully not with any such bad intention but having entered then remains and develops the intention to intimidate, insult or annoy or to commit an offense. So, he either enters with a bad intention or enters lawfully but stays with the bad intention. In either of these cases, the person is set to commit criminal trespass. Let's move on. Now, if this property upon which this person enters can be anything, it can be an office, house, business center, right? Yeah, cool. But if this criminal trespass is committed in a house where people live, then it's called house trespass, which falls under section 442. Now we know that the actus reus and the mens rea of criminal trespass remains the same. The only difference is that the kind of property is a house. So you have actus reus, mens rea, criminal trespass plus the property is a house. That makes it house trespass under section 442. Next point. If this house trespass is done with the preparation to conceal oneself, then it becomes lurking house trespass. So criminal trespass plus house plus preparation to conceal oneself is equal to lurking house trespass. And the trespasser makes preparation to surreptitiously enter the property. Next point. If this lurking house trespass is done at night, then it becomes lurking house trespass by night. Now, we know criminal trespass, we know it's actus reus, we know it's mens rea, and we know if it's done on a house then it becomes house trespass and we now know also all the variations of house trespass like lurking house trespass and lurking house trespass by night. An aggravated form of house trespass is house breaking. When house trespass is done in one of the six ways which are given in section 445 then it becomes house breaking. Let's read section 445. Section 445 says that a person is said to commit house breaking who commits house trespass if he affects his entrance into the house or any part of the house in any of the six ways here and after described or if being in the house or any part of the house for the purpose of committing an offense or having committed an offense therein he quits the house or any part of it in one of these six ways i know that sounds confusing but the crux of it is if the trespasser enters or exits in any of the six ways which are given in section 445, then it becomes housebreaking. So, and if it is a house trespass and the trespasser entered or exited in one of these six ways which we are going to discuss, then it's housebreaking. That's simple, right? What are these six ways in section 445, you ask? You can see the six ways on your screen right now. First, if he enters a quiz through a passage by himself or by any appetite of the house trespass in order to committing the house trespass. So, goes through a passage. That's the first way. Second way, if he enters a quiz through any passage not intended by any person other than himself or the abettor for human 
entrance or through any passage to which he is ob obtained access by scaling or climbing over any wall or building. So the second way is if he uses any passage which was not made for human entrance or he gains access by climbing over a wall or scaling a building. This is the second way. Thirdly, if he enters or exits through any passage which he or any abettor of the house trespass has opened in order to committing of the house trespass by any means by which this passage was not intended by the occupier of the house to be opened. So the third way is if they enter or exit himself or within a better or he enters or exits through any passage which he or the abettor has opened and the occupier of the house did not intend for this passage to be open. Fourthly, if he enters or quits by opening any lock in order to committing of the house trespass or in order to quitting of the house after trespass. Fourth way is if he opens any lock, okay? Fifth, if he affects his entrance or departure by using criminal force or committing an assault or by threatening any person with assault. So, if he enters or leaves by using criminal force or assault or threat to assault. The definitions of force and assault can be found in section 349, 350 and 351 of the IPC. Just read them once. They're very straightforward. They're very easy. Still, if you have trouble understanding what is criminal force and assault, just leave us a comment and we make a video on that as well. Okay? Cool. If he enters or quits by any passage which he knows to have been fastened against such entrance or departure and to have been unfastened by himself or the abettor. So if there's a passage which was fastened and he or the abettor unfastens this passage, then it's one of the ways of housebreaking. So house trespass plus one of these six ways is equal to housebreaking. If you understand the nuances between these different kinds of trespass, you will never have any issue. Think of it like a staircase. It starts with criminal trespass, then you, then you add house to it, then you add preparation to conceal oneself, then you add night to it. On the other hand, if there's criminal trespass plus house plus one of these six ways, then it becomes housebreaking. So don't get confused about the fact that whether this will be house trespass or whether this will be housebreaking. In most cases, if the person will be charged with a bigger offense, so he gets more punishment. And why are we talking about the punishments? The punishment for criminal trespass, house trespass, lurking house trespass, lurking house trespass by night, and housebreaking and housebreaking by night may vary. And housebreaking by night is when housebreaking is done, plus it's done at night. Yeah, so that's simple. And all these punishments vary. I will insert two pictures with all the punishments so you can see all the punishments right here and it's really convenient so you see all the sections and all the punishments. Using this and it'll make your PT a smooth sail or it'll make you really smart. Either which case good for you. See you next week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get notified of the new videos every week. Goodbye. Thank you.